Well, the mics are back on. Come rain, come shine. Radio Entrepreneurs is always ready to talk to entrepreneurs, and uh, we are sitting in the MTP Software Radio Entrepreneur Studios. Thank you very much, MTP Software, the leader in the sports CRM. My name again, Jeffrey Davis. I'm the host of Radio Entrepreneurs, also chairman, founder of Mage LLC Management Consulting Firm. Our next guest, eagerly leaning over the table, Mm -hmm. uh, Stephen Hahn Griffiths. And he's Executive VP or Chief Reputation Officer for the Reputation Institute. Welcome. Great to see you. Thank you very much. What is the Reputation Institute? Very cool company. Leading, very cool. Very cool. Leading technology. <laughs> uh, but put simply, uh, a data and insights organization has a patented algorithm that allows us to measure the reputation of any given entity, companies included. Wow. That's cool. How do you do that? Well, there's a little magic, a little science, but uh, you know, half joking. The seriousness of what we measure is the integrity of companies, and we have a way of surveying different stakeholders, consumers, regulators, investors, employees, and we measure their perceptions and how they feel about companies, and there's seven things we zero in on, the products and services of that company, how innovative they are, the workplace environment they create, governance, citizenship, leadership, and perceptions of financial performance. When you put all those things together, you can measure 100% of the reputation of every given company, and then, of course, diagnose where the issues are and the things you can improve to make the company more reputable. Are you using your own proprietary database, or are you using theirs? We use a uh, proprietary survey platform, which allows us to uh, calibrate and measure reputation in a very scientific way, but it's filtered through research panel providers. Uh, We tap into a global panel of around 20 million individuals, where we can identify nationally representative samples of any given stakeholder that uh, our clients are interested in measuring. Uh, more conducive to products, to services, to retail? All of the above. You know, we measure over 25 different industries. And what's fascinating is each industry brings its own prejudice to the table. So if you're in, like, for example, in the consumer industry, you get a free pass because many of the things are household products that people are very relatable with. But by comparison to things like energy or even uh, data tel- telecom providers, where you're somewhat viewed as more of a utilitarian, commoditized product or service, you have a tougher time with reputation just because of the very thing of what you represent. So well, industries I, matter. Well, I think about service firms like law firms, accounting firms. Do you work in those areas as well? We do. And you know what's interesting about those kinds of companies is your reputation arrives in the room before you do. And it really is the calling card on whether you're going to be able to enlist more clients, whether you're going to actually be able to drive your business, gender more support, and more importantly, word of mouth referrals. So reputation impacts any business today. It's very important. So when was the business started? And give us some kind of history to it, because it's quite interesting and in how it all originated. Sure. Uh, business is now 22 years young. I right. say that with serious... Uh, it's like my staff. <laughs> but I say that in the sense that, uh, you know, reputation is a very nascent concept. And uh, our company wrote the, the seminal book on reputation, Uh, The organization was founded by two leading professors, uh, Charles Von Brum, who was a leading professor at NYU Stern, uh, and Case Von Real, who was at the Erasmus Business School in Rotterdam. The two came together and applied science to really calibrate the first rubric for measuring reputation. The company went from there in leaps and bounds, became now what it is today, which is a global enterprise. And uh, we're in a point in time where we can innovate and measure perceptions of people and, and how they view organizations in terms of their reputation and link it back to the impressions they generate. In other words, a social media discourse. Putting the two things together allows you to fully understand the way people think and feel about companies today. Very, very interesting. So give us your background. My background? Um, I was uh, destined to become a doctor. Uh, took a sharp left turn of? and went into advertising. Uh, a physician. I was, okay. uh, I was MD. MD. Destined to go to medical school in the UK. Um, had a wake-up call and decided that my destiny was not about diagnosing patients, but about diagnosing brands and companies. Um, so in that regard, I've always been a practitioner of science and craft, um, worked in leading agencies around the world, including Saatchi and Saatchi in the UK, Leo Burnett in North America, Mullen here in Boston. Um, and really have applied those principles of science to really calibrating brands and how people ultimately perceive them. Interesting. And how long have you been there? 
Uh, I've been in the business now for over 25 years. So, so you, cause you've started with the business. Uh, so, uh, when you mean start with the business? You, when the business started, you started with Not it. Not with Reputation Institute. No, I've actually been with I Reputation. see you right on the website. Yeah, indeed. Wow. Without glasses. Yeah, with, with, with a bit of retouching probably. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, I've been with the company now for five years. I was part of the turnaround team. Right. The business is now uniquely positioned for a next generation of growth and in a very exciting place and, and where it's going into the future. Interesting. So where is the future? Where are we going with all this stuff? Because analytics are really critical in today's world, and well, there's a lot of false analytics. Sure, absolutely. Well, the future is two things. I alluded to it slightly earlier, where you can link the impressions of what people think about you to the perceptions of how people see you. And so you take that social media dialogue and you link it to the perception that people have through survey-based research. That allows you to unlock new and revealing insights about how people truly identify with companies. But the second part of the future is this whole concept of purpose. And you might have heard the World Economic Forum in Davos, everyone talking about purpose and sustainability. Right. Uh, 181 CEOs came out last year in the Business Roundtable and said, purpose is the single most important thing today because it's the animating force for driving profit. So it's no longer about just doing good as a business, it's about doing good as a company and, and in the many ways fulfilling your social contract. In, in what you give back to society as well as making a fair profit and, and driving the business forward. So this whole concept of corporate brand purpose is many ways the future and I'm excited to announce our company has actually found a very unique way of now measuring purpose, probably the first to be able to do this in the world. Can you go a little bit more deeply into that? Yeah, and Explain it to us? I would love to. So put simply, if you think about what a purpose is, it's the definition of why a company exists in society. It transcends the way people think about the brand and the reputation. And in many ways, it's like the halo that sits above company. And your purpose is a belief system that really defines how you conduct your business affairs. It's a measure of integrity. And in many ways, it's your moral company. So in assessing companies through the lens of not just doing good to society, but more importantly, how they can fulfill a bigger agenda that goes beyond just earning profits in how they can enable society, improve people's lives, and ultimately make the world a better place to live. That is a new metric in which society and financial markets are judging companies, and that's very much part of the future. Purpose is very much here to stay today. Wow. Well, wow. uh, again, I, again, I'm just going to probe a little bit deeper. Can you give us a, a sense of what you've done in some of the service industries? Sure. So if you define the service industries, there's professional service industries, there's retail services, there's technology services. Well, let's say, services. you know, I'm, I own a consulting firm. Sure. There's consulting, there's law, there's law. this is big in Boston, accounting, yeah. uh, financial services, uh, architectural services, engineering services. These are, th that's a big part of the economy in Massachusetts, professional economy. And most people I know in those businesses, they're giving themselves subjective evaluations. Yeah. Well, your reputation is only as good as your stakeholders. In other words, it's many ways in the eye of the beholder. So the way your customers think about you and how they feel about the experience and what they play back at the end of that interaction in having consumed your brand and having been consulted with or, or serviced is ultimately your reputation. So you're as good as the, the way you treated your last customer and it's critically important. You can't grow a law firm, you can't grow a tech company, you can't grow a consulting practice without having a great reputation, because what is the first people ask? Hey, what was that experience like for you? And if that word of mouth referral is, is either negative or neutral or not especially positive, chances are you're gonna go and work with somebody else who can do a better job and ultimately has a better reputation per se. Interesting. Uh, again, everybody, we've been speaking with Stefan Hahn Griffiths, uh, Chief Reputation Officer at the Reputation Institute, or as he says, Executive VP. Uh, Stephen, if someone's looking to meet with you, talk with you, learn more about the organization, how would they find you? Well, reputationinstitute.com is a pretty cool website. You can learn more about our company. Uh, in fact, we're about to reveal the most reputable company in the world. So if anyone's interested in those informations, uh, feel free to reach our company directly and we'll be happy to divulge any information and uh, share with you who are the, some of the leading companies in the world and some of the reputational best practices. Great. Thanks for being on the show today. We hope you come back with maybe some case studies. Love to. That'd be great. Thank you very much. My name is Jeffrey Davis. I'm not signing off. We'll be right back with more stories.